Wake up, everybody! It's time to get to math class. It's almost noon. Get out of bed. You're late. Here we go, everybody. We got a lot to do today. First of all, let's talk about this Math 7, Chapter 8 test. Let me whip through these answers for you all as fast as I can. Are you ready? Have that homework out. Here we go. Number one, is that sample bias? No, it was random and you asked a lot of people. No. Number two, uh, is 21 out of 35 people considered 60%? Heck yeah, it is. 21 divided by 35 is a 0. 0.6. That's 60%. So yes, that's a valid conclusion. Number three, you have to find the mean of all of these numbers. When you add them all up, you should get 120. Divided by 30 should give you the answer of 4. Number four, we're trying to make an estimate for the number of people who like rock music between you and your four friends, A, B, C, and D. Well, you think 200 people would like rock in your school out of 400. Person A, 180. B, 160. C, 260. D, 200. Hope you remember your proportions. When you put all five of those answers in order, everybody, your center would be a 200 and your variation would be a 100. Number five, look at these box and whisker plots. The center for A was 50, the center for B was 30. The variation, which in this case means the IQR, the interquartile range for A was 15, for B it was 20. Number six, the mean absolute deviation was 1.25, everybody, 1.25. Number seven, to find the interquartile range, you're going to put those numbers in order first. Take the third quartile, subtract the first quartile, and you should get a 22. Number eight, you want to take a sample of all the potatoes in Idaho? No way, man, that's crazy. Just do a sample. There's too many potatoes in Idaho. Just take a sample. Number nine was the question most students got wrong. They saw the ratio 6 to 10. They said, sure, that's 60%. But no, you got to read about that ratio first, everybody. It says the ratio of students who own a bike to those who do not own a bike is 6 to 10. That means you surveyed 16 people. So only 6 out of 16 had a bike. That is not 60%. That's only a 37.5%. So no, not a valid conclusion. Your sample does not closely estimate that percentage. And number 10, we're looking for that missing value of x to make the mean a 7. That missing value was a 8, everybody, 8. All right, we're still going to continue with our math 7 tests. Today we're going to do number 9. Time for some geometry, everybody. Well, this one's a little bit more basic geometry with our polygons, but we got circles in there. So please, don't forget to use your calculator. And I'm going to share with you some formulas here to finish off the video so you can look at that uh, as you're doing this test. It looks like it's three pages long and only 12 questions. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. But let me tell you a couple quick things you need to know that you might not remember from last year. First of all, everybody, you got to know what complementary angles are. Complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles, they're angles that have to add up to 180 degrees. Kind of easy to forget that. So here's a little trick for y'all. I take my magic marker and I turn that C into a 9. Maybe a 9, 0. That reminds me to ask that up to 90 degrees. When I take a look at supplementary, I do a little sideways line like that. Now it looks like an 8. And that might remind me that it's a 180 degrees. Complementary, supplementary. Don't you dare forget those. What else? You gotta know about vertical angles. I often make a mistake and call them opposite angles because they're on the opposite sides of an X. These two angles, because they're on the opposite sides of an X, are congruent. What's congruent mean? It means that they are the exact same. They are the same. I also have to find the sum of the interior angles for shapes, everybody. Specifically for this test, triangle, quadrilateral. Google it. Look it up. It'll take you 30 seconds. You're already sitting at there at your computer right now. But, everybody, we also have a nice formula, a nice little secret to find the sum of the interior angles. You take the number of sides that that shape has, and you subtract 2 from it. Then, you multiply that answer by 180, and that will tell you the sum of the interior angles. Okay, that's all i got to tell you today, everybody. Again, you got some questions coming your way. 
Here's your little cheat sheet formula sheets. Again, please don't forget to use the calculator. Uh, pi is equal to 3.14, approximately, of course. Sometimes we call that 22 sevenths, although I don't think you'll need that today. Uh, circumference of a circle or the circumference of a circle? The area of a circle, the area of a square, the area of a rectangle, the area of a triangle. I think that's all you need to know. So let's zoom this on in, everybody. That's the old-fashioned zoom. And you can either pause that or maybe the video will end right there and use that to take your test, everybody. Good luck. You can do it. See you all tomorrow.